Alright, so in this section we're going to start off with all the Flexbox properties that you can use for Flex Containers, so the parent element in which you can then align all your child elements. And we're going to start off with a property called Flex Direction. Now we've already taken a quick look at this, but in this video we're going to take a deeper look and learn about all the details. So this is our code from before. So you have your index.html file here, and I'm going to actually remove the children I have right now to create ones that have a number inside them so that you can actually differentiate between them, which is not that important for now. But when we go through all the different flex directions there are in a few minutes, then it's going to be important. So you're going to see the difference actually. Now just a brief recap of what I already told you briefly before. When you just use display flex, then the default value for the flex direction is going to be row. Now we can also make this explicit, let's say flex direction row. And again, I'm going to remove these. It's just going to be a lot of overhead for you to process the actual property I'm using. Um, flex direction row, this is the default. You don't actually have to edit like this and you can see it made no changes to the page. Now, before we look at all the other flex directions, let's actually see what happens if I give the container a float right. So you can see that the whole container is now floated to the right and still we have our row that is filled from the left. But in this case, of course, the actual whole container is still floated to the right side of the whole page. Now we can make this a bit more explicit by adding a border to this. Let's say one pixel solid and white. And you can see that it's just the whole parent element, the flex container that is floated to the right. Now if we add, for example, a whole width of 100% to this, you can see that if I remove the border again, it's going to look the exact same way as before without the float right. So the elements inside are not floated. And now even if we add container div, which is going to select all the four boxes we have inside our container and then say float right, then still it's just going to start at the left side of the container. And you can see that actually it could or you would normally expect if this was like let's say display block that all the child boxes here would be floating to the right. But when you use Flexbox, there are different properties that define where the boxes are in the container and so on. So the child elements are just going to ignore all float properties set to it. So remember all the child elements inside a Flexbox are not going to listen to what you tell them by a float. You have to use another property that we're going to discuss in later lecture. Now another thing that's also going to cause your children to be displayed on the right side of the container is another flex direction. But this is just a side effect basically. It's not the way you're going to align your children in a flex container like this, but it's the flex direction. So let's see what other values we can have here, like for example row reverse. Now this is still going to keep your container to be a row element. So all the children are still going to be added into a row here. And also remember that the main axis is still going to be horizontal here and the cross axis is going to be vertical. Now with row reverse, the main difference is that all your children are going to be added at the end of the main axis. And then we're going to fill up the container towards the beginning of the main axis here. So I say main axis instead of left and right because you have to differentiate between left to right layouts and right to left layouts. And Flexbox is going to do everything in reverse, basically, for right to left layouts, which are used in some Arabic countries, for example. Okay, so now the third value we can use as a flex direction is called column. And we can use this to align our elements in a column like this. So they're going to be stacked below each other and they're going to be stacked from top to bottom. So this looks very similar to just four divs here, which would have a display block and would then also be aligned exactly the same way. But remember that we have a flex box here. So as we're going to learn, we have a lot of powerful ways to actually lay out our children, at least nearly in every way we want. All right, so now in this case, again, the elements are filled from the start of the main axis on the top here to the end of the main axis, which now goes vertically down. And it's the same principle again, basically, just that the main axis is now vertical and therefore the cross axis is now the horizontal axis here. Okay, now, as you might guess, the last kind of value we can use here is called column reverse. And if we do this, then again, similar to row reverse, 
we're going to start filling up the container from the end of the main axis, which is now at the bottom, and fill up to the start of the main axis, now at the top. So this generates four very different layouts, but it's always the same kind of principle of how the elements are added to their parent. All right, so those are the four properties or values you can use for flex direction. And you might use column, for example, for the whole layout of your site in total. Like for example, the first element then would be some kind of header element or a navigation bar. They would have some kind of content here and maybe a footer and maybe some footer even below that, something like that. That would be something where flex direction column would be very useful. And of course, flex direction row is the default for a reason because it's also what you're going to use most frequently. Let's say, for example, inside your actual content, when you have, let's say, a gallery or some kind of grid layout where you have multiple items beside each other. And this, I would say, is also the main strength of Flexbox. And of course, we're going to go into that in more detail in the coming lectures. All right, so that was the first Flexbox property. Now we're going to take a look at quite a lot of them, but you're going to use them in quizzes, for example. There's also a very nice website that's kind of like a game where you can use and test out all the different or, well, most of the Flexbox properties. And that's going to reinforce your learning a lot. And it's also going to motivate you to actually learn them and recap them. And I know there are quite a few of them, but actually once you've used them for a little bit, it's not that difficult to remember them. So I really recommend you go through all the quizzes, you code along with me in the lectures, and you also do this Flexbox Froggy game, is what it's called. Um, you can't do this right now yet, but once you have some more of the properties in your skill set, then I'm going to tell you and tell you which levels you can already do. Alright, so that's all for the Flex Direction property, so let's go ahead to the next one.